conceptual perspective. People talk Real about talk, it. Like throwing shots. All of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great start to your week. Uh, for those of you who celebrate uh, Christmas. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas. For those who don't, I hope that you enjoyed an opportunity to spend time with family, uh, to express love and appreciation for one another. Look, time is precious. It's valuable. It's unpromised. Uh, take every moment you can to love on the people who mean something to you. Uh, settle differences. Um, I can't stress that enough. Stop holding on to things. Work things out. It doesn't mean allow people who don't know how to treat you into your periphery. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is those things you're holding on to that are stopping you from reconciling things that you can reconcile, it's time to let them go. It's things you've been holding on to for years. Let them go. Some people, you're going to have to let that go and let them go, but you need to release it because it's not doing you good. Find a place where people care about you, where they appreciate you, where they see you highly, where they are able to see more than just your fallibility, um, your fallibilities, your imperfections, and they start to see the beauty in those imperfections. Uh, love on one another. I can't stress that enough. Uh, all right. Getting down off my high horse. Uh, I'm going to talk about this Tory Lanez, Meg The Stallion thing. I've sit back and I've watched it since the verdict uh, came in uh, that he was guilty. And there's always been some things going around. And I am going to touch on a few of those things that have been on my mind for a while that I've sort of set on. Uh, you know how I'm about celebrity gossip, um, but uh, I see behaviors of celebrities as simply microcosms of much larger issues in many instances, and uh, I tend to break them down and analyze them from that perspective. So I'm going to talk about that. But as you saw at the intro of this video, we are still in the midst of a fundraiser. I cannot stress that enough. I'm not going to get off into it. You saw the video uh, introduction in the beginning. You have followed me for years. You know the work I do. We need your support. Uh, nothing happens uh, by wishful thinking. You don't create realities through simple osmosis. Uh, well, things can get pretty interesting in that area, but I'm not going to get off into that. Uh, I digress. Look, all right, this Tory Lane's Meg the Stallion thing. The first thing I'm going to say is we put way too much value and weight into celebrity. We tend to live our lives vicariously through them. We are, we are attached to them. That's why we defend behaviors that are not conducive to pro-social uh, environments, to uh, long-term productive realities 
and accomplishments in life. We celebrate them for their ability to reach us in one particular area, their gift in music, their gift in um, thespianism, acting, uh, their gift in uh, being able to produce large amounts of money, uh, be it investing, business, whatever it is. We, 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 we celebrate their celebrity and we lose sight of their humanity and then we began to expect more of them than they've ever been able to give or produce because they are carrying the same scars, hurts, pains, difficulties, frustrations in life that we are. They simply probably don't have the money issues we have. And I can tell you this, you can have a lot of money and still have money issues. All you got to do is have more demands than you have money and it doesn't matter how much money you have. So you got to understand that. There's a lot going on, but we put way too much gravity, too much energy, too much focus into these lifestyles that are presented before us. And I would argue that these lifestyles are presented to us by way uh, uh, of the mechanisms of media intentionally. Uh, it misdirects us. It takes our attention off of things we can control. We don't control the lives of these individuals who are doing X, Y, Z and experiencing X, Y, Z. What we do control is how we move, the decisions we, wait, we make, who we decide to uh, create alliances with, how invested we are in creating a better future for ourselves and for our progeny. Those things we control. And when we are misled, misdirected, uh, we are easily triggered, we are easily distracted. What it does is it takes us away from the things that we should be focusing on. But when we look at this, when I break it down and I say, okay, well, what's going on here? And there are obviously going to be some people who don't like what I say. I get it. Uh, but if you have followed me for any stretch of time, you know I'm not here to be popular. I'm not here to get 100,000 and 50, 150,000, 200,000. Uh, subscribers because when you get that much you're telling people what they want to hear and sometimes it's not about what you want to hear it's about what you need to hear it's about bringing forth the truth and speaking on it at a level that sometimes challenges people's comfort zone and challenging them to do things beyond what they normally want to do so you're you're probably never going to get to where to every I mean, that do because sometimes i'm going to step on toes and eventually your toe is going to get stepped on because nobody's perfect. My toes get stepped on by me. Uh, and I'm honest about that. I'm not perfect. I'm still growing. I'm still learning. I'm still becoming. But my goal is a focus in front of me to be better. My goal is a focus in front of me to be elevated and be empowered to do things for my family first, my community next, and my race. It's that simple. But what happens is we get caught up in all this other stuff that's going on. So when I break this down, I'm looking at it from a male perspective. I'm looking at it from what I see in this relationship that does not represent, first and foremost, manhood or does represent manhood and then uh, womanhood and then black love, black unity, true black relationships. See, when you don't have an understanding of what a relationship is, how a relationship functions. Um, that thing um, becomes dysfunctional in your life. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Becoming a millionaire does not change how you move in relationships. It actually amplifies imperfections if you're not careful. Um, you tend to want to fix every problem with money. You tend to want to make life behave the way that the money has behaved. In other words, you want people to bend to you. You want life to bend to you, but you're not investing in a way that makes life contour around your desires, your dreams, your aspirations. You're you know, basically saying, because I'm X, Y, Z, this is what you're going to do. And that's not how you get out in a relationship. Um, so bottom line from what I've gathered and put together from all the different varying stories that have come out and some own self omissions by Tory Lane Lanes and some, some recalls, 
there's some type of disagreement and argument in the SUV. She gets out, mad, walks off. He gets out the car and says, dance, dance for your life or dance something and fires at the ground. Some shrapnel from the bullets pops up on the ground, hits her in the leg. Uh, initially, she doesn't say he did it. She says she cut her leg with glass. And uh, but eventually it comes out and then it becomes an issue. He's charged and there are two different sides. Now, we, we, we always find a way to get caught up in things where there is going to ultimately be division. And we normally have this division right along the lines of our life experiences. So we got a big gender war going because everybody's judging it off their experiences. So how I feel about the other sex is gonna determine how I view everything that comes across me. And I'm never gonna ever take time to look inside of me and ask myself, is there something I'm doing that is contributing to this experience that I am cycling in my life? Am I doing something that is causing me to re-experience the same thing over and over again? No, it has to be the fault of everybody else. Despite the fact I'm the common denominator in all of this stuff that's going on in my life, doesn't mean I'm a bad person, doesn't mean I'm purposely going out and doing it. It means there's something in my life that's reproducing something. It's the reality of life. It's a universal truth. If you're experiencing something in a, cyclo cyclo in a cyclical manner, then you have to look at your behavior, you have to look at your thought patterns, you have to look at what you think of yourself, how you carry yourself, the people you hang around. There is a an entire dynamic dynamic environment going on around you. What are the what what are the uh, common factors that are always present? Are those good things? Ask yourself. Seek professional help. But we've got to learn how to be accountable for who we are. We, we've got to learn how to be accountable for what's going on in our lives. It's easy to point the finger and say, look what they did, it, did to me. And they could have very well did that. And they could be wrong for doing it. But at some point in time, when are you going to place yourself in an environment where the people around you have your best interests at heart? Where the people around you are looking to elevate you instead of use you as a means of dealing with their own hurt, pains, brokenness, trauma, and everything else. We have to learn how to move into relationships first and foremost. And we've got to learn how to weather uh, tumultuous situations. The easy go-to in life is to point the finger of blame. The easy go-to in life is to sit up and say, he did this to me. She did this to me. He broke my heart. She broke my heart. He cheated. She che all, all of that stuff is easy to do and could be very true, but it doesn't contribute to healing. Now, you need to acknowledge. You need to know it. You need to be true with yourself. You don't need to be sitting up looking at somebody that's not good for you and, 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 and treating them like they are. But what you got to understand is the way that I'm going to change this is to heal something within me. And if you're not careful, if you don't hear what you and you, you'll have somebody who is for you and you won't be able to see that they're for you. You won't be able to receive the love they're giving. You won't be able to cultivate and nurture the relationship because your view of what should be is totally skewed by the trauma that you have not yet confronted. So that's a little lesson in that if you want to really get it, go to Born in Captivity. I've been reading from it. I'm going to continue to read from it, but go to Born in Captivity, which is my 19th book. I lay this out in great detail, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a summary right here. Look, first and foremost, no dude that's calling himself a man should be firing a weapon at a woman. No dude that's in an altercation with a female who is unarmed should be pulling a weapon. Now, there are a bunch of things at play here. You got a cat that's from Canada trying to pretend he's from the hood, first and foremost. You got all of this persona thing created by uh, pseudo hip hop uh, influencers, uh, because that's not real hip hop. But you got this this pseudo idea. And so everybody's trying to live with that. So everybody's packing. So everybody feels this is the time I put up. You got a kid dead now. Nah, uh, take off. Dead because the first go-to is to pull the gun. 
that mentality is so devastating in so many ways. But we're talking about a guy who pulled a gun on a female. Now, I know the alternative story that came out. I wasn't present for the trial. And I know there's a bunch of other things going on. Uh, and so a lot of people are talking about he got railroaded. He was a man in a car with a weapon. Uh, that, again, a lot of questions about DNA being on the magazine and a bunch of other things. Here's the thing with me. There's a way that a man moves. He's not a sucker. He's not a simp. He's not a trick. But he's a protector. He's a provider. He's a purveyor of... Uh, of situations uh, for the purpose of providing solutions. He fixes shit. That's what he does. Um, doesn't always have the answers, but give him enough time, he'll find it. Uh, he's not always right, but if he does something wrong, he'll come back and make it right. See, that's manhood. Manhood is saying, I'm going to make the world around you better. Uh, in this world that is intensely and inherently hostile towards you, my sister, I'm going to be that one force that's going to make sure that you can find peace in my presence. I'm going to be that place where you know if you're with me, nothing's going to happen to you. But we see this far too often when you see the rise and the peak in intimate partner violence, intimate partner in homicide, where things get out of hand real quick. And I'm not excusing women for their violence uh, because my st the statistics show me that our sisters are violent at the at pretty much an equal level, 23 and 24% respectfully, as far as physical violence is concerned. But when it comes to intense harm and murder, there's a distinct difference. We simply physically have the capacity to cause way more harm when we express ourselves physically in an aggressive way than a female does. I'm not telling you to sit up and let a woman kill you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that should be a way of reason when you know if I can get out of this without causing harm, I'm going to get out. I can tell you times more than I would like to admit where I sit up and said, obviously, you know, this is about to go wrong. I'm out. I was, there have been times I done took a couple of pops upside the head. And removed myself from the situation and realized this is a person that I can't be with and kept it moving. Uh, women, side note, real quick, come on in. This is sidebar, me, me and the ladies. Ladies, let me tell you something. I, I try to live my love life in a in a, in an honorable way. I do. Uh, I try to do right by people. Uh, I try not to intentionally cause harm. I think I do a real good job of doing that. I'm not perfect, but the one thing I tell you is I make it uh, uh, something that I'm proud of that I keep my hands to myself when it comes to females. And you guys have a way of really testing the brother, but. Uh, I have been blessed to be able to maintain myself. Look, let me, but here's what I want to tell you. When you're looking at a male, especially a black male, especially a black male that grew up in the hood, he has been conditioned since he was extremely small. Somebody hit you, you hit him back. And there's a very good possibility that he has not been conditioned to understand that it doesn't apply to a female. His instinct may be to hit back. This isn't giving him a pass. This isn't saying it's right. I, you just heard me say, brothers, don't do it. I'm not for it. I'm never going to be for it. But I'm telling you, you don't. Once you violate a person, let me make this very clear. Once you violate a person, you lose all ability to determine how they respond. Now, you can sit up and say, that wasn't fair. All I did was this. Why did they do this? I pop. It's a bunch of people out there now whose families are mourning because they believed all they did was punch a person and they end up getting a bullet. 
And while that person overreacted, you don't get to control how someone is going to respond. Now, with that being said, you should be able, if you're healthy, to know when you're dealing with someone who it has the potential to be violent towards you. There are going to be little signs in the beginning. Um, they're going to be subtle sometimes. Sometimes they're going to be very pronounced, uh, but you need to pay attention to them. You need to listen to them. You need to move and act, and act accordingly. You can't change them. They are who they are. They have to want to change themselves. Now, with that being said, back to this, and I'm going to be done. Um, the moment he pulls the gun out and fires at the ground, to me, he's out of line. Um, that I can't at any point after that go to that is the system something that I think I want my brothers and sisters in no but right now if you do certain things you put yourself in the way of a system having an unregistered gun in a state like California and discharging it in the direction of another person even if you're not trying to shoot them, discharging it in another, you could just discharge it and it's a crime. Then, then there are these things that are coming up that he's having to deal with. Here's my thing. If, and I've been around enough now, now, this is where the other side is going to get pissed off. Man. I've been around enough and seen enough in my life, had dealings and seen and been uh, intimately involved in helping so many brothers in this in ancestors with this system that I know that you can be convicted by a jury and be innocent. So just because the jury convicted him, it doesn't mean it. Now, that's not necessarily the position I'm taking. I've, I've paid attention to it. I've listened to uh, some interviews, I've read some things, I've listened to rap. You'd be surprised at when you say something and you think you're being ambiguous, what you're giving away. And it's people who literally get paid to understand and read into. And you don't expose yourself like that. That's another thing. If there was a situation like this, my thing is I would be working internally trying to fix it instead of externally trying to stir the pot. Uh, we fight too many of our battles out in the open, things that we should be resolving amongst ourselves in private with doors closed. I don't think that helped him. I think it hurt him. I think it pre presented him in a light that I, I think a real man wouldn't want to be seen. You're sitting up and you are going tit for tat with a female. I see that on social media and I just trip a, a man arguing back and forth. I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to state what I have to state. I'm going to give you something. And after about the second or third exchange, if I see you not trying to hear it, I'm going to, get, I'm going to let you have it. I'm not going to argue. I'm, I don't, I'm not arguing with a woman because that doesn't resolve anything. You don't settle things in arguments. You settle things in communication and conversation. An argument is a contest on who's going to win. I'm not in competition with a woman. So I'm not going to argue with one. So, in essence, there's a way of carrying yourself as a man. And we've lost it so much that there's a bunch of males that's not going to feel this because they believe that they should be able to go after a sister any way they want to. They should be able to talk to a woman any way they want to. They should be able to handle them. Based, if they acting like this, I can handle them like this. What you don't realize, how you treat people from the homeless person on the street to the to, to the uh, black woman who can't keep her mouth to herself, to all of that, isn't about them. It's about you. And that should be something about you that has a higher level and standard and demand on yourself or how you want to move in the world, the impact that you want to have on the world. This isn't given a pass to misbehaving women and women doing things that are not pro-social, that are not uh, conducive to creating safe environments for themselves. Some women, y'all really literally trust that you're safe when you're not. And you think you can do things that you can't. 
And then when it comes down on you, you cry foul. Yeah, it's a foul, but you created it. And so you can actually be right and be wrong at the same time. And people are like, that's double talk. No, it's not double talk. A man should keep his hand to himself at all costs because he's just too, in most instances. Now, this is also one of those instances where he might have been at a physical uh, uh, physical disadvantage. But then again, as a man, you don't put yourself in a situation. I would never, ever be involved with a woman who was physically dominant. You know, um, that may be a few in this entire world. You know, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm aging, but even a woman that's bigger, I'm 10, 10 per pound. I'm, I'm, I'm significantly stronger than her per pound. And normally I'm going to be bigger than her, but even if I was the same size, I'm going to be stronger. It's just, it, it, it's, it's just the way it is. But, you know, obviously, but I'm never going to find that, that that if when I run into a woman that's physically dominant, meaning that I know if I got into a physical situation with her, she could overpower me. That's not the woman. I'm not going to be with you because there is something inside of me as a man that says protect. I'm going to protect the person that can protect me. Now, I'm not saying you don't want a woman that's down. I'm not saying that you don't want a woman that you get in a scrape. She going to be right there by you. I'm not saying you don't want that. What I'm saying is there should be a natural art of that. We escape far too often in this world because we're buying into social ideas and social constructs that are not conducive or pro-social and do not uh, lead into the things that are supportive of our values, interests, and principles. And when we escape the move towards our VIPs, values, interests, and principles, we move into behaviors that literally destroy us over time. And I know y'all wanted the gossip version of this. There is no gossip version of this. This is horrible. This is a black man that's more than likely going to do prison time because of making a stupid decision. This is something about a black woman who probably has scars. She got shot. Well, she got hit with scrapnel. She, she got hit with fragments of bullets. She got shot. Behind what I think was an argument. You know, at first I was thinking she beat him down. And then got out the car. From what I understand, there were no physical exchanges. And I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But what I'm saying is, here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. In the case that you do have this chick that is bigger than you, stronger than you, can handle you. And she whooping your ass. Do what you got to do to get off of you. To whatever extent of that, if you literally your life is threatened, then you do what you got to do. But if your life isn't threatened, do the next thing you need to do to get off of you without putting her life in jeopardy. But get her off of you. I get I get that. You don't have you don't owe nobody to whoop your ass. Nobody on either side owes you. You, you don't owe anybody that. Here's the thing. All accounts have her walking away. The moment she starts walking away, she's no longer a threat. Now your emotions are, are, are involved. Your ego is challenging you. And now it's about that. It's about the ego. It's about what it is that you're feeling. Your manhood has been challenged. You got handled and now you feel in some kind of way. Men, we can't operate from that feeling some kind of way bullshit. We, we have a right to feel, we have emotions, but we've got to be the ones who are in control. We have to be the ones to sit up and say, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. And you can be hurt in so many ways. You can be hurt and it's not physical, but you have to say, we're not doing this. I'm not going there. Why? Because... As a man, there's a responsibility to, for me to move a certain way because my sons are watching, my nephews are watching, the boys that I work with are watching. How will he handle this? You know, I hope both of them work through this uh, and come out better than where they are. Um, she has reported um, that 
you know, there's been some emotional and psychological scarring. There's been uh, some negative uh, PR behind it. Nobody wants to deal with her or touch her because they think she's a problem. Uh, so it's inhibited her uh, career to a certain extent. Uh, I haven't been able to really look into it, but it's a possibility. See, that's what happens is when you do something like this, you open up yourself to what is going on on the other side. And it may or may be, may or may not be real, but you created it. Um, and I, again, because we put so much weight into celebrity status, we're all living vicariously and we're all invested. I'm not invested. I'm invested in the idea of black men being men and black women knowing how to walk under the covering of a good man. That's it. All the other stuff is stuff I'm trying to heal and work over and change. Black men being forces of power, protection, provision, uh, priesthood and prophecy in their home, not in a religious sense, but in a direct divine connectivity to the, to, to the most high. That's me. We've got to get there. We've got to get there. We've got to give ourselves permission to be in process. We've got to give ourselves permission to be imperfect, but we've got to demand a certain standard of performance and, 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 and how we move in this world. That is what we are going to have to be willing to do. There's no other way around it. We are going to have to be willing to look at who we are and say we can be better. The easy go-to is she hood, she uh, ratchet, she ghetto, uh, he a simp, he, you know, he, everything except I'm going to raise the standard of how I move in the world. Uh, it's, it's all about get them before they get me uh, 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 kill or be killed mentality, so to speak. And I think that that's not it. Black love has to be at the top of the thing. Again, when I say black love, I'm not talking about being anyone's footstool. I'm not talking about letting anybody use you. I'm talking about knowing your strengths and operating in your strengths and embracing the idea of benevolence towards others especially if you're talking about the other the the other gender the other sex why because we were we were literally designed to work in unison with one another and we can talk all day long from our feelings and our emotions about how we're not going to be able to get get back to one another if we don't we're doomed it's that simple you can make up whatever you want to make and and I can show you that you cannot do it without one another. And in any effort to do so, it's just going to further frustrate our efforts of ever coming out. And co-mingling with them, marrying them, and all that other stuff won't solve the problem. We are going to have to figure out who we are. We're going to have to fall in love with ourselves enough to love on ourselves and to love on one another. It's that simple. Anytime there's violence, whether it's a violence against a female I mean, a female violence against male, male violence against um, female, male on male violence, female on female violence. You've heard me speak out. I went hard in the paint for Shaquella Robinson, still doing so. The people who attacked her were female. Now, the, 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 the trifling ass dudes that watched were dudes. Well, one of them might have been a little. Anyway, on that note, uh, I'm going to get out of here. But that's my take on it. Um, so it is what it is. With that being said, don't forget to support the work we do at the Odyssey Project, which is always going to be a push. We really want to hit a goal uh, before the end of the year. That's fast, rapidly approaching. So the goal um, is 10,000. It's been 10,000 each time, each week for the last three months. So we want to close out strong. Uh, we haven't hit it, haven't even come close. So it's the same goal. We're not trying to hit a new goal each time. We're still trying to hit the original goal that we never hit. So let's do it. On that note, no matter what, I'm going to be here because it's my purpose. And I'm going to go hard in the paint for what I love, what I believe in, what I cherish. I'm going to challenge you to do the same. On that note, I'm out of here.